So I'm going to go over how to create a very simple slider controller inside 3ds Max, not using any code or anything like that, uh, but just using two splines and then using the Reaction Manager to then utilize that controller to actually do something in your scene. So I've got a car in my scene here for this example. Um, I'm going to utilize the tires for this. So I want to create a slider that's going to be controlling the turning of the two front tires. So I'm going to start by simply creating a brand new spline, and I like to start with a rectangle spline and I'm always going to create a spline in my orthographic view that way the spline is actually created on a specific plane of my choosing so I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag out that rectangle spline uh, I don't really care about the the length and width as I'm dragging this out because I actually have a set numbers that I'm always going to start with um, I'm always going to make the width 10 and the length is always going to be 2.5 so that's just simply going to give us this kind of like small rectangle. And then in my corner radius here, I'm simply going to bring this up to about 1.25, which is simply half of the length, which is just going to round out the ends of my rectangle, creating kind of like a capsule-like shape. So I'm going to go ahead and hold Alt and then hit Q on the keyboard to isolate that spline and then center it to my grid. Really important I send it to my grid before we move on to our next step. So what we created right now is kind of like the border for the controller here. Uh, this isn't going to be the actually, you know, the thing that's going to be controlling what's actually changing in our scene. Uh, we're going to create a circle which is going to act as the, the main controller here. So our circle, I just want it to be simply the same shape as my capsule, just in terms of the overall width. So the radius here, I'm going to go ahead and make this 1.25. And then I'm going to quick align it to the border of my controller. So basically it's just kind of fit snug inside the border there. I usually like to change the object ID color to something nice and bright so I can see that very clearly. So I'm just going to make it kind of like bright pinks or purples. And we need to link this circle to the border here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my select and link. You can also use your scene explorer to do this. And I'm going to click and hold on whatever is going to be the child object. In this example, it's going to be my controller. And I'm going to drop it over top of my parent object, which again in this is our border. So if I grab my border and I start moving it around, it's also going to bring that little controller with it. So it's really important I do this step because if I don't, I can't do the step that we're about to do. So I need to kind of limit, or what I would like to do is I would like to limit the circle's movement here so that way it actually stays within this capsule shape as I move it left to right in my x value here, my x axis. So I'm going to go up to my motion tab, top right hand corner, and inside our assigned controller here, right, it might actually be kind of closed up for you, we're going to click on assign controller, and I want to change not the actual position controller here, I actually want to simply change the x position's bezier float. Uh, what I would like to do is I would simply like to limit the actual float amount that, you know, if, when I say float amount, it just basically is the position amount for this circle here. So I basically want to force it to stop at the end of each border here, or the, the end of our border left and right. So I'm going to go ahead and click on x position. And I'm going to click on Assign Controller here, just below the words Assign Controller. And I'm looking for Float Limit inside this list. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. When you hit Float Limit and hit OK, you're going to get the Float Limit Controller window here. Uh, by default, it's setting our upper limit to 1,000 and our lower limit to negative 1,000. Uh, what these limits are is essentially just the distance that our circle here can travel. So in order for me to figure out exactly how far I want my circle to travel, I'm looking down at the bottom of my grid at my X value here, and I'm simply moving that circle all the way over to the right side of my border. And then you can see down at the bottom it says 3.7. Uh, kind of like 3.725 roughly. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply type in 3.725 or whatever number you see there. So now if I simply move my circle over, I'm actually moving my cursor past that border and you can see that circle is actually stopping. And I want to ensure that if I move my circle off to the left side here, I want to have the exact same value except the opposite. right? So instead of 3.725, I want to have minus 3.725. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And now as I move my circle back and forth here, oops, wrong number, 725. Seven, there we go. So now as I move this back and forth, you can see it's nice and snug inside that border. 
got my controller set up here, so I'm going to go ahead and close down my float limit controller. Uh, I don't typically set the float limit for things like my Y axis here or my Z because there shouldn't really be a reason for me to even move the circle in that direction. So some people typically ask me, why don't you just lock it off? I mean, you could take the time to lock it off or you could just simply not move it in the directions it's not supposed to actually move, right? So I'm just going to simply move it left and right. So I'm just going to leave that like so. So we're going to hit P for our perspective window and I'm going to go ahead and end my isolation to bring back the rest of my car. And I'm going to grab the border of this controller and typically I like to slide this in front of a car here or wherever I'm actually going to be affecting. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could scale the border of my controller. Uh, and I had just just simply using a uniform scale and you're going to see it's actually going to scale up the circle as well which is the child object and it's still going to work the way that we want as I move it back and forth it's still going to be held inside that border so what I would like to do now is I would like to have this circle simply change the direction of the actual rotation of our front tires here so that way if I move my circle to the left side of my screen these tires are going to move to the left side uh, that way, I can then set up another controller, which is going to be altering the actual X rotation or the forward rotation of these wheels, right? That way I can layer in that animation and we can actually have an animation that looks correct. So in order for us to do this, we have to utilize something called the Reaction Manager. Uh, the Reaction Manager uses... Uh, the terminology is masters and slaves. You can kind of think of it as like parents and child as well. It's a little bit more less PC, um, but we use masters and slaves and the master basically tells the slave to do something, right? So in this specific instance, I'm gonna be telling this circle here, this is gonna be my master. And as I move it left and right here, the slave is going to be the tires Z rotation right, as it moves left and right like so. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have that circle selected and I'm gonna go up to animation, up at the top of my screen, actually deselect your circle, animation, uh, reaction manager. So inside the reaction manager, top left-hand corner, you have a little green check mark, that little green check mark, sorry, plus sign. Uh, if I click on the plus sign here, it's going to allow me to add in my master. So I'm now gonna click on the circle inside my scene. Now, not only am I selecting an object, I'm also selecting a specific parameter within that object, right? So any, any type of parameter here, uh, we can create as a master. So there's a lot of different things we can do. So I wanna ensure I'm selecting the proper thing. So I'm gonna to go to transform, position, X position, limited controller, Bezier float. Right, we'll go ahead and add that in. You can see that inside my reaction manager now. So I have my master. Uh, the master is, is pretty useless without having some slaves here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the silver plus sign now that's available to the right of the green one. And now I'm gonna first select my first tire here. Right, so I'm gonna click on the point helper. I'm then gonna go to go to, go to transform, rotation, and then I am altering the Z rotation here. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Z rotation. You can see it adds that into my top list here where I've got my master and then any sort of slave that's added into this reactions list is gonna be listed underneath that master. You can see we have a little indent underneath as well to indicate that it's a slave. Now it's also gonna create something called a state, right? These states are essentially uh, different setups for this master here, right? If I have my master in this center position here, we're telling those slaves to also then be in whatever position we desire. By default, when you add in a slave to a master, it's going to create a state here. We're going to delete these in just a second, but for right now, we don't really care that they're being created. So I've got my first front tire added in. I need to add in my second front tire. So again, I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Slave. I'm selecting the Point Helper, Transform, Rotation, X Rotation. Or sorry, not X Rotation, Z Rotation. Do that one more time. Transform, Rotation, Z rotation. So I've got these two states here. Again, I don't want to have those states in that list. So I'm going to go ahead and simply click on state three. And then I'm looking for the little red X that's actually in the middle of these two spreadsheets here. I'm going to go ahead and click on delete state. And then I'll click on state one and then hit delete state as well. So we've deleted those states that were made by default. So right now I, I am stateless. 
what I would like to do is I would like to create three different states for this controller. My first state is going to be when it's just simply in the middle of this controller, which it, thinking about you know visually what makes the most sense, I would want to have my tires in a straight like position. So kind of like the default position like you see right here. So with that circle selected, I'm looking for the button that says create state. It's right beside where it says create mode. We're actually not using that button. We're just using create state. And I'll go ahead and click on that button. And you can see I now have a brand new state with the values set to zero. So these values here are the different values based on the parameters that we've loaded into our masters and our slaves. So by default, I'm going to have these set to zero because this is my kind of like quote unquote zeroed out position. Now I want to name these states as I go to. So I'm going to name this straight, right? So my car is driving straight. I'm then going to take the circle and I'm going to move it over to the left side of my screen here. Once I move it over to the left side, again, this is my desired second state. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create state. And you can see with this next state here, we have a brand new value in that master's value slot, right? So we have negative 3.725. So if you recall from earlier in the video, that's just simply where we have, we're, sorry, what we changed our float limits to. So I want to change the value of these tires here. Um, typically for the turn, you're going for something anywhere from like 20 to 30 degrees in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 20 and hit enter. Uh, now you can actually see up in my viewport, my tires aren't turning in the proper direction. I actually want them turning in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to add a negative value in front of my 20. Once I can actually click on that. Okay, well, you'll just simply type it back in. So negative 20. Uh, and you can see the tires just simply turned off to the side. Again, you can use your discretion for your you know type of vehicle that you're working on, how much you actually want to turn that tire. You might actually want to have that turn maybe say negative 25 degrees. Right? That's like the most extreme turn. And I want this to also turn the opposite wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and also change the value in that left side's wheel. So I'm going to do negative 25 because I obviously want to have each wheel turning not only at the same time, but also the same amount of degrees. So now as I move my controller right to left here, because I have two states created inside that reaction manager, as I move my circle to that first state where it's in that centered position, my wheels are going to also animate with it. Now we want to create one more state here because I want to have these wheels turned over to the opposite direction as well. So again, moved it over like so. I'm going to click on create state. You can see instead of negative 3.725, now it's positive because we're now on the positive side of our grid. I'm then gonna simply take whatever value I used for my first turn, so negative 25 degrees, I'm just gonna use the positive, right? So that way each turn is symmetrical. So now if I take this slider inside my scene, we move it back and forth, we now have a nice control for the turning or the steering of those front wheels. If you want to involve the back wheels too, you could if you wanted to. Most cars, they, they won't actually have that type of steering, but some cars do, right? So you can simply add in those back wheels as well. Whenever you're not turning your car, you should always have this circle centered to this border. Very, very easy way of doing that is just simply holding shift and then hitting A in your scene. It's going to turn on your quick align tool, and I'm just going to simply quick align the circle controller to the border here. Right, you can just simply see that's snapped into place. And then of course, because we have this link or this connection created inside the reaction manager, those wheels are also going to go back into that straight state, right? Because we have our circle in that original state. So just before we wrap this up, let's simply rename these states uh, because it's not great to have like state 005 and stuff like that. So I'm going to have right because my car would be turning to the right here, right? If I was the driver, I'm turning to the right side. And then we're going to simply have left. All right. That's it.